So let's go ahead and jump into our reading today. This is Matthew chapter 6. Last uh, Wednesday, so two days ago, we did Matthew chapter 5, where Christ began his like kind of public ministry, uh, famously known as uh, the Beatitudes, do this thing, don't do that thing, right? Do this thing and you'll be like this. Um, all the blessednesses, right? Blessed are the meek in spirit, all of that. Uh, so that's kind of what we worked through. And now we're up to chapter 6, and it takes a bit of a turn dealing with very practical things a little less um what well, you have a little less room for interpretation right this is a little more direct so here we go let's jump in starting at verse one beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them for then you have your reward from your father in heaven very clear uh, i'll just do a quick review of this verse because there's a couple big pieces of theology laying right here number one is if you are concerned with piety which all of us should be at a certain level um, we don't need to be practicing that in public. Now, that doesn't mean don't live out your faith in public, but you're not to be practicing it, practicing it in public so that others will see. And here we're warned that if that's the case, if you want others to see you doing these like pious things in public, then your reward is done. You've already got your reward. There's no reward from the Father. You've got it. Men saw you. That's what you wanted. That's what you got. Verse 2. So when you give alms, that's just an offering. Uh, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so they be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they receive their reward, right? Again, but when you give alms, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so the alms may be done in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. This is, um, uh, I think, of great value to us. Um, even if you are part of a local church or whatnot, uh, it, it's not really saying you have to fool yourself and, and forget how much you gave. Ultimately, what it means is that others should know what you give. Uh, in my church, for example, the people in leadership, um, our pastors, Bible study leaders, um, elders, deacons, we don't know what anyone else gives. That's done by a separate group so that they don't get any kind of special rewards for us, right? They, they are not doing it that their way um, so that we will see or we will notice or they'll get some sort of benefit from people that is to be a secret thing so we do everything we can to do that uh you should probably if you're part of a local fellowship make sure that you guys have those things in order as well those kind of checks and balances uh to make sure that your giving is as private as it can be uh not to say you shouldn't get your tax benefits from it make sure they're doing that part too verse five when you pray don't be like the hypocrites for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and in the street corners so they can be seen by others truly i tell you they receive their reward but whenever you pray go into your room shut the door pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees you in secret will reward you yeah there's no reason to be praying on a street corner and screaming uh, especially if you're doing that simply to be seen by others when you're praying do not uh, heap up empty phrases as the gentiles do for they think they'll be heard because of their many words. Don't be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask. I love this one. Uh, you know, a lot of new believers, uh, people who are new to the faith, or, or just start coming to church and say, man, I really want this relationship with God. Um, I I've had a number of people say, can you please teach me how to pray? And the answer is no. Um, there are a couple examples, like things we should be praying for, right? Um, that is sort of the point of the Lord's Prayer to kind of give you an outline. Here's stuff um, that you should have as part of your prayer life uh, what we don't want to do is say here's some great phrases to use because those don't actually mean anything to you right it's meant to be a conversation um, so just heaping on more words or uh, praying really really long it isn't the point at all God actually knows what you're asking so he wants you to speak in your own language whatever your words are however you would speak to your friends those are the types of phrases you really should be using in prayer uh, because it should be a conversation, a relationship, as we say. Verse 9, pray in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Meaning, uh, you should start off by praying, God, I want you to do the thing you want to do because you are above me and I'm below. Um, verse 11, give us our daily bread. You should pray for your needs, right? If you have a need, uh, food or your rent is due, you're not sure where the money's coming from, go ahead, bring that up to God. Um, forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. It means thank you for your forgiveness, right? For looking out for me. Help me to forgive others around me. 
do not bring us uh, to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. Meaning, God, I know that there are struggles in my life. Um, if you have a place where you can remove the evil one from my life so I can follow you more clearly, that's what I'm asking for. For if you forgive their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. If you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. This is actually very interesting um, because at this point, um, different mm, theological traditions kind of jump in here, and people see this in fairly distinct ways. Uh, the way the way I see it, and I'm happy to you know have a good discussion with you if you want to throw that down in the comments. The idea that we damage our relationship with the Father. It's not that his forgiveness goes away. It's that we damage that relationship. He has trouble hearing us if we are holding grudges against other people. It's very important that we are not upset, angry, and holding grudges if we want our prayers to be answered, to be heard, to have that back and forth between us and the Father and the Holy Spirit. Whenever you fast, don't look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show that they're fasting. Truly, I tell you, they've received their reward. When you fast, put oil on your head, wash your face. Your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who's in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. If you make a sacrifice for the kingdom, don't make this huge deal about it. Fasting is one of those things. It's, it's one of the practices we are called to do. Typically, um, you are going to wind up fasting when you're looking for an answer from God, right? You have an issue in your life. You want to draw near so you can hear him more clearly. Taking food out of the equation is great because every time you're like, oh, I'm hungry, I should eat something. You go, oh no, I'm fasting for this purpose. And it kind of refocuses your mind. Uh, there's no reason to let other people know that that's something that you have going on. Uh, so don't pretend that you're suffering some great thing uh, when it really is a situation between you and the Father. It really is no one else's business. Concerning the treasures, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where the thieves break in and they steal. Store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes, where the thieves don't break in and steal. For where your treasure is, your heart will be also. As Westerners, I'm a Westerner myself, I'm from America, it's very easy to get caught up in the collection of things and making a little nest for myself, right? Having the most comfortable stuff or the nicest things. If that's really the thing that you treasure, um, then you are putting your time and your energy and your money and your effort into something that's going to wear out. Just think back about the newest thing you purchased, right? How long is that going to last? You know, um, I, I'm kind of a car guy, so I think about cars a lot. Every time I buy a car, I'm, I'm really excited about either an old car, a new car, whatever. I'm really excited about it, and I tinker with it, and I play with it, and I polish it, and I look at it, and I talk about it. Um, and in a couple years, it is wearing out, and it's getting older, and it takes more effort to keep going, and I've lost my interest in it, right? That's how so many things in life work. So we really should spend time putting away things that moth and rust will not destroy. Um, eternal things, relationships, um, love, obviously building something for the kingdom in your local church. That stuff goes on and on and on. The eye, verse 22, is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body is going to be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light is your darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. A slave will either end up uh, hate for one and love for the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You can't serve God and wealth. That seems to be self-evident. If you're really just chasing money, then money is going to be the thing that rules you. Uh, that great theologian Bob Dylan once said, you're going to serve somebody, right? So decide who it is you want to serve and then follow that. Therefore, I tell you, verse 25, don't worry about your life. What you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, or about your body, what you'll wear, is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? It's an imperative question, right? Uh, of course you are. 
And can any of them by worrying at a single hour to the span of your life? And why do you worry about clothes? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow was thrown into the oven, he, will he not much more clothe you, ye of little faith? Yeah. You know, if, if we really follow the fact that God takes care of the earth and how well he takes care of it, how much more is he going to take care of you if we are of the faith, right? If we have this faith that we're talking about here. Therefore, verse 31, don't worry about saying what will we eat, what will we drink, what will we wear? For it's the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly father knows that you need all of these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Seek the right stuff, man. Seek the kingdom, and all the stuff that you need will be added to you. You know, probably, oh, I, I hate to admit how old I am, probably 35 or so years ago, um, I, I felt a call into ministry, and I switched um, my intended major. I was getting ready to go to college, and I felt this call to ministry. And, I'd had a job lined up. This advertising company wanted me to come in. I had a little bit of an artistic side. And I was a bit of a writer and kind of a big mouth and all that. And they thought, man, you'd make a good ad guy. And so I had, I had a, a company in Columbus, Ohio, that was willing to kind of uh, fund that part of my life, right? They were going to give me money for college if I agreed that when I was done, I would come and work for their you know, advertising company. And that was the direction I was going, man. It was good money, a great company. I, you know, theoretically, I would have loved doing it. And I felt this call into ministry. And so uh, decided not to do that whatsoever. Went right into ministry as I was feeling called to do, knowing full well that uh, the money wasn't going to be there, right? People don't enter church professional life uh, to gain wealth. No matter what the newspapers say, no matter what New York Times thinks about a few pastors of mega churches that have had problems. In general, when you meet a pastor on the street, he is not seeking out money. He really is all about the kingdom. Maybe good, maybe bad at it, uh, but they, they do a pretty good job of striving for righteousness and waiting for God to fulfill the rest of their needs. This is actually not just for people in professional ministry like myself. It really is for everyone. If you put your energies in the right place, all the stuff that you need for life is going to be added to you. Verse 34, so don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's troubles is enough for today. I love that. That's just a great kind of a bumper sticker, right? Don't worry about tomorrow. You got enough trouble right now. Worry about today. I love that. It's just an interesting way to live life. It really is um, almost like a proverb. I know it doesn't happen in Proverbs, but it really feels like one, right? Well, let's go ahead and close in prayer, and we'll jump over and watch a silly film from the 50s. Actually, I say it's silly. I have no idea what it's really about. Let's pray together. God, thanks for some time together. I know that each and every one of us need to be taking time out uh, in our personal study, and uh, it's such a great focus to open our day with the word of God, we thank you for continuing to bless us even when we don't see it come and help us to set aside the worries of our day and the worries of our week. Take a moment, a deep breath, spend a little time in prayer, privately, me and you, and then go out, face the world, and be the men and women you called us to be. Pray all these things in the name of Jesus because you told us we should. Amen.